Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it Got a Little Negative. Kind of reminds me of that Kenny Chesney song, Got a Little Crazy Last Night. Well, we got a little negative last week. So well, we're going to start off and take a look at the side-by-side -side view, the industrials, the S&P, the NASDAQ 100. We're going to focus on the S&P 500 uh, this week. Look at a couple of indicators and then to check in. Uh, Apple had a pretty good day last couple of days, even with all this... Uh, selling going on. So we're going to take a look at that. All right. So the Dow Industrials were down 921 points this last week, two weeks in a row. Pretty strong move to the downside, closing below the 21-week moving average. The S&P 500 was down about 81 points. Not quite as negative of a picture as what's showing in the Dow Industrials. We just kind of get, came down and, and touched the 10-week moving average in here. And for the one that was the least negative, we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, which was down 105. And I say least negative because it didn't uh, break the prior week's low, much less closing below any of the, the prior week's trading. I don't like the S&P closed below the uh, three weeks worth of trading. The Dow closed below two, four, six, eight, ten, ten weeks of trading. It was the lowest weekly close on the Dow since January 14th. So a little bit of selling kicking in in here. Let's take a look at the industrials and the transports. You know, I talked about this divergence before between the transports and the industrials. It's going to be interesting to see how this all gets reconciled. But right now, the transports were pretty negative this last week, down 421. Got this trend line between... The October 22 and October 23 lows in here. And that's um, going to be interesting. We break that trend line. Uh, it's going to get real negative. All right. Let's take a look at, uh, let's go back to the home page. Take a look at the S&P. Here's the weekly I just talked about. I've got this gap identified here on the daily chart. It was down 75.65 on Friday. So a little bit of a rollover going on. we got a moving average cross, the 10 below the 21 here. That hasn't happened in a while. Hasn't happened at all since October. Okay, so yeah, we're getting at a minimum a pullback. Now I think uh, the end of this B wave that I've been talking about may very well be in. And I'm talking about on the S&P, that is the March 28th high. So we're going to see if that holds. Right now, it looks to me like we're, we've started down that way. We're looking at the first few waves in here. And I've got this identified with, uh, I'm just labeling it as minuet level wave structure for now. Uh, and we'll see how strong this gets. But this is what I'm looking at as we start to come down in here. One, two, and then it looks to me like another one, two. And that we're working our way down in the, within the third menu sub minuet within the minuet. So, you know, when you get down into these very like micro waves right here, uh, it gets uh, gets a little bit messy. There's no doubt about it. But right now, look how strong this was in terms of the move down here on the spy. And it's the same picture on, on the SPX. Same, I was going to say, same picture on the SPY. And here's what we've got on the SPY. And here's that gap I've got identified. The low, low of the gap is 497.38. Okay, and we, you know, we're working the same picture. Let me see if I can adjust that a little bit there. That's a little better. Working the same picture down here. So if I had to put a target on for the third, you know, minuet level wave, third push we're talking down here around 495 okay and so we're looking for the wave structure looking for five clear impulsive waves down in here uh, and that's the picture that we've got on the SPX and it just looks and acts like it wants to roll over now we need to get a little more damage than this because you can see back here in the July to October move that was uh, that was a pretty good little what three month move, so we've just begun right now. Now, the caveat is of course, what's what's the alternate? I mean, the alternate is 
we take out the March 28th high, then I think we have a whole lot more coming, okay, to the upside. But right now, I'm leaning pretty heavily into this B wave being finished because it just fits on so many uh, levels, okay? So that's the picture we got on the SPY. Let's take a look at a couple of indicators. Look at the damage going on. And I'm going to go back to the daily here. Look at the damage going on on the percent of stocks. Well, this is what I want right here. Percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average on the S&P 500. We're sitting at 41.3%. Pretty negative picture. It's the lowest reading on this indicator since November 9th. So below all of this price action in the S&P 500, you could see the divergence that occurred. Here was that October, November bottom that occurred. Okay, so we'll be watching to see. Uh, I just don't think we've got, you know, that we're near any kind of bottom yet. Okay, um, and the same kind of damage is occurring on the New York stock. Well, wait a minute, that's the 200 day. So right, let me go back here. Here's the 50 day on the New York. Okay, it is sitting at 36.6. It's even a little bit more negative than what's going on with the uh, in the S&P 500. Little bit of free fall this last week. Uh, let's take a look at the short term trading index. Okay, this closed 2.26, the 10 day moving average on it. Look at down my notes 1.13 right here. So the 10 day is pretty much in the middle of the range that I look for. This is kind of the range down here on the blue line. But when you get above the two level on the short term trading index, the trend. That, uh, that's a pretty negative picture. It's the most negative reading we've had since December 20th. And from a weekly perspective, this is the highest weekly reading of the trend in over three years. You got to go back to, uh, let's see, I think it was February 21st of 21 to get a reading that was higher than the close that we had this last week. Okay, so pretty negative move in here. Now, one shot, one reading like that does not indicate a bottom. Okay, you need a cluster. So we'll continue to monitor these uh, indicators. McClellan Oscillator, let me pull that up. Okay, what I want to focus on is the summation index, which is the cumulative of the oscillator. We're sitting at plus 23.65. Look at the divergence that has occurred since the uh, the lows back here in December or the high in December and the stock market, the S&P 500 just did nothing but continue to go up. The summation index did not confirm that at all. And we've now taken out the low readings of February. So we're back to readings that occurred back in December. So this is kind of a, you know, a confirmation of the rollover that's now occurring in the market. OK, so we'll see how negative this is going to get. Um, let's take a look at Apple. OK, over the last month and a half on Apple, it has come down into that territory where it bottomed in uh, October, November. OK, really, I guess it was the end of September into October. So we're right down in here around the 168 to 170 range. And we got some pretty significant divergence going on. And then look what happened Thursday and Friday as the market's selling off. Apple's rallying like crazy. I know that there was some PR about, you know, their chips and a revamp of uh, the Mac and chips and things like that. I don't know if that was just an excuse or what. But the bottom line is the price did go up and we had a heck of a lot of volume kick in in here. What I wanted to point out, though, is that there was a pretty strong support level in here between January, February into March. OK, that got broken at the beginning of of March. And now this should provide some pretty significant resistance. So, yeah, we've had a strong move up with Apple, but it's got some work to do to get through this resistance level. We close above that level. We close above 180. It may be off and running. You know, maybe we got a new leg going on. We'll see. 
but I just wanted to point out we got some work to do to get above that uh, with a possible noting that we got a possible turn going on. So we'll see what happens with Apple. Okay, that's it for this video. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.